So I am 23 years old and am in shambles right now. My girlfriend, also 23 years old, of just under three years, wants to break up because the doctors have told her that her egg quality is horrible and it's very unlikely that she will be able to have kids. She told me that and apologized to me. I immediately told her that she didn't have to apologize to me and that I love her and my life doesn't change because of that news, as I consider my life to be waking up next to her. She fully went into a depressive state and wanted to not speak for a little bit, which I respected and gave her the space on Monday. Then the following Saturday, I asked if we could talk as I wanted to know how much time she needed while also affirming that I am here to support her no matter what. She then, on the call, said that we should end it as she believes that she is not a woman anymore due to the inability to have kids. I told her she is a woman and that kids do not define her. I told her to please not do this as she is pushing away the person that is meant to be there, who wants to be there. She blocked me on Instagram and Snapchat, but left our messages where we have kept some contact. She keeps on apologizing to me and saying that I deserve a woman who can fulfill all my wants, even though I keep telling her that all I want is her. I've told her that no matter what, through thick and thin, she is the only thing I need, and that in this current moment, I don't want anything other than to be there for her. She keeps saying no, as she thinks she's protecting me. But she's gone out of town with her family and has her therapy session on Friday, which she said she would talk to them about this situation. I know she's just hurting, and I keep messaging her that I'm there. Am I hopeless? Do I give up? I don't want to. She's genuinely the love of my life, the person I want to grow old with, the person I envision doing everything with. Please help me. To add, the reason why she can't have kids and that her egg quality is poor is due to her undergoing chemotherapy for an autoimmune disorder when she was four years of age. The doctors also said she was unlikely to live past six. She got the news about her egg quality when she went to freeze her eggs for later use, but during the first checkup, they gave her the news. Now for an update. I finally got to speak to her last night. I started the conversation by saying I needed to speak first and uninterrupted. I told her how much she means to me. With the move I feel, that means I won't give up no matter what. No matter how long she needs, I'll be there. One year from now, five years, ten, no matter what. I said, I know we've been through a lot, and I respect the space you needed by ending things, but I want you to know that my feelings for you haven't changed. I've had time to reflect, and I realize even more how much you mean to me. I'm here, not just as someone who loves you, but as someone who's committed to being there for you in any way you need. I believe in us, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make things right. Whether it's taking things slow, rebuilding trust, or just being a friend right now, I'm all in. You and our future together are worth it to me. That was the gist of it. She got even more sad and apologized to me. She said, I can't make you wait five years, putting your life on hold for me to let you down. I said, no matter what, I'm here. I said, let us try again for a year and I'll give you the out. But in that year, you have to speak to me and communicate your feelings. You don't have to do anything for me at all. I'm here for you. So we're trying that. We are doing some contact now where I'm checking up on her, reminding her I love her and that I'm there for her and that at any moment, I'd be there. She is still very depressed, but I talked to her about setting up some goals for the next few months. She's an avid reader, so I first brought that up and asked how many books she wants to read in a month. She said two. She is also going to try and go to the gym and she wants to work on going three times a week. She's enjoying hanging out with her brother as it makes her forget a little about the pain. Right now, I've gotten our contact to a call every two weeks and a semi-constant stream of messages just updating me on her life. She feels major guilt and pain for what she thinks she put me through. But I emphasized multiple times that she never made me sad at all and that I was sad due to the situation. I spoke about how I knew we would be all right in the future. I know two days of contact in a month is horrible, but coming from no days, it's something. I'm going to keep showing up for her. Also, an update on her situation 
She told me she went to three different doctors and they all said she's infertile. But I do not think they bluntly said she is infertile. That is what she interpreted it as. She told me they said she has low reserves of eggs. I am going to get more information and try to research it myself while calling endocrinologists. Thank you all so much. I told her about the post and what everyone has said, and I think it made a difference. I will update you as this proceeds. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Most of the comments here are focused on the wrong thing, the circumstances around your girlfriend's fertility. They are relevant, but the main issue is that the girlfriend is dealing with news that has been devastating for her. And yes, she's spiraling, but she has a therapist, so she has access to professional help. Original poster, it makes sense that you're scared and sad. It's an awful situation, but you have to give this time to play out. Give her some space, don't check in too often, and find things to keep yourself busy. It's only been a couple of weeks, and that's not a long time to come to terms with news like this. Comment two. I'm sure this is very difficult for her, but there are also plenty of options left, including using a donor egg to create an embryo. Of course, there are plenty of ways to become a parent without carrying as well. She beat the odds of life. She's already incredible. Science and medicine can help her achieve this dream too when she's ready. Just be there for her, listen when she's ready to talk, and don't dismiss her feelings or try to fix it. Just be there and listen. Don't freak out about being blocked. That's her trying to deal with it on her own. But you can be patient and be kind. Now for the update. I'm scrolling through my phone, making the most of my Saturday night. Then, bam, a message from Olivia pops up and I'm like, wait, what? She wants to meet up. After that whole deep convo we had a week ago, I thought she'd need more time to process everything. But nope, here we are. So, we settle on this diner we used to hit up all the time back in college. It's got those classic blue booths and neon signs, takes me right back. When I walk in, I spot Olivia right away. But man, she looks nervous, like fidgeting with her hands, avoiding eye contact, the whole deal. We sit down and the first thing she brings up is her brother, saying he's been super supportive through everything. I mean, I know he's a good guy, but she sounded so serious, almost like she was trying to convince herself that everything was fine. Then she casually mentions he's got a girlfriend now, someone I haven't even met yet. I feel a bit weird not knowing her, but I let it slide. I ask if they're serious and Olivia's like, they're just having fun, but her tone, not so convincing. I brush it off, trying to lighten the mood. I suggest we order milkshakes like we used to, and for a second, I see a flicker of a smile, but then she's back to her phone, texting like crazy under the table. I ask who she's texting, and there's this pause, she tells me it's her brother. I mean, I get it, he's been her rock through all this. But why the constant texting? We talk about her goals and she mentions wanting to take a painting class. I think it's a great idea, but I wish she'd be more excited about it. Then, out of nowhere, she asks about my family, how they're handling everything. I laugh and say they're the same old jokesters, just trying to lighten the mood. She chuckles too, but I notice she's still distant lost in thought. I ask if she's okay, and she says she's just got a lot on her mind. She finally spills that her brother's worried about her. I mean, I get it. I am too. A few days later, Olivia texts again. This time, she's going to a family dinner at her brother's place. She invites me, but I have to decline because my parents want to spend some time with me. They ask about her, and I explain the whole situation. My mom's immediately worried about Olivia. My dad chimes in, suggesting we invite her over for a family barbecue next weekend. I tell Olivia about it, and she sounds excited, but hesitant. A few days later, I get a call from Olivia's brother. He wants to meet up, and I'm like, oh boy, what's this about? We meet at this quiet coffee shop, and he looks so serious, not his usual self. He tells me he's worried about Olivia and feels like she's hiding something. When I ask what he means, he says she seems different lately. The barbecue day comes and Olivia shows up wearing this big smile, but I can tell something's off. During dinner, I overhear her talking to her brother in hushed tones. I catch snippets about not wanting to burden him and needing to be honest. My heart sinks. After dinner, I pull her aside and ask what's going on. 
She looks startled and says it's nothing, but I push for more info. She finally admits she's thinking about moving away for a fresh start. A few days after that, I'm mindlessly scrolling through social media and I see this post from Olivia's brother's girlfriend. It's a pic of them at a concert and in the background, there's Olivia looking upset. I feel this knot in my stomach and know I need to confront Olivia about it. So, we meet at the diner again. She tries to play it cool, but I can see right through her. I reveal what I saw and she finally breaks down, confessing to feeling overwhelmed. Then she drops this news. She says she might have a chance to have kids through a different method. After everything, this is the first time I'm hearing about it. I can see the flicker of hope in her eyes and it just makes me want to know more. She tells me about this new technique her doctor mentioned. It's a long shot, but there's a chance she could have kids. She says she hasn't told anyone else because she's scared of getting their hopes up. I can't believe she kept something like this from me. I mean, it's not like we were on the verge of starting a family or anything, but still. I ask her how she feels about it, and she admits she's scared, but also excited. We talk more about it, and I can see this weight lifting off her shoulders. She actually smiles, and it's the first genuine one I've seen in a while. We leave the diner that night, and I feel like we're finally on the same page. It's a step forward, and I really hope it leads us to a better place. Edit. Olivia's brother and his girlfriend are genuinely great people. We had a long talk, and he expressed his concern because she seemed distant lately. He had no idea about her new treatment option, and once he learned about it, he was fully supportive. Olivia's reactions to his girlfriend were due to her feeling left out, not because she dislikes her. We agreed to include her in future family gatherings. Finally, Olivia's treatment is a long process, but we're hopeful. Am I the idiot for dumping my boyfriend after he chose his ex over me repeatedly? It was a random topic that was brought up during lunch that my boyfriend and I planned. Background. We've been dating for two years now. The lunch date went great until a question I brought up made the date very awkward and we ended the date on bad terms because no one caved. The topic was about celebrity relationships and stuff. Until I asked him to tell me honestly if he's talking to other girls besides me. It was a lighthearted question asked in jest. He said yes, he talks to his ex once in a while. I asked, how often is once in a while? He said, about two to three times a month. I said, what comes to his mind if I say this fact makes me so uncomfortable? He said it's not fair because he couldn't believe it was news to me since he believed he mentioned this in the past. Well, to be fair, he did. But I didn't remember him telling me it's as often as doing it monthly. He told me how his ex helped him through the darkest moments of his life, that she's very important to him, that I have nothing to worry about because the ex is living overseas, is married, and is currently pregnant. I then started telling him my thoughts, how I respect their history, but how this doesn't sit well with me because of boundary issues and my traumatic experiences in the past with men keeping in contact with their exes. Now, this is where the conversation started really going sour. I thought, honestly, kind of expecting that he would somehow acknowledge my feelings. Well, he told me straight that he thinks I have a choice to make, that it's okay whatever I decide to do and that he will understand. I was not expecting this. To add insult to injury, he said he will not permanently cut contact with his ex for my peace of mind. I was honestly speechless. I've never demanded anything from this man. I tried to be as agreeable as possible. I've never escalated a misunderstanding because I will always be the first to cave and apologize. I was just too stunned to speak after hearing all this from a man I had dated for two years. I was very loyal and committed. I thought we were on the same page. This man was so good to me. I'm just confused about how it was so easy for him to suggest that I make a decision to either accept or deny the fact that he will forever keep contact with his ex. I just didn't know if this incident would change us. I can't shake off the feeling to not be considered enough to find common ground. Am I overreacting? What would you do if you were in this situation? Now for an update. Thank you all for the kind and straightforward comments. For the record, I never asked him to choose. In fact, I also said I will never ask him to cut contact with her if she helped him through his own trauma. 
In fact, I remained silent the rest of the conversations. I was surprised at the fact that I'm hearing my man say, well, he's basically saying my peace of mind doesn't matter. It was the complete disregard for my feelings and never even acknowledging them. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, to not be considered enough to find a common ground. There are many, many things that people happily compromise on. This is an issue that it's pretty common not to compromise on. You have reasons for being uncomfortable and that's okay. However, your discomfort can be acknowledged and overridden. He is not the people in your past that have caused issues and it's frankly unfair to expect him to change his behavior when he has been completely forthright on this. Your discomfort does not mean that what he is doing is wrong and he is being as fair as he can be. Your choice is either to accept that this discomfort is something you need to work through and move past or to break up and be clear with future potential partners that you will not tolerate contact with exes. Comment two, I have an ex I am pretty good friends with. If my partner told me I had to end the friendship to make her feel more secure, I would be extremely upset and would reconsider the relationship. It is not that I love my ex more than my partner. It is that I do not want to be in a romantic relationship where my partner controls my friendships to this extent due to insecurity. It is about a difference in values, not about who you love more. I think you have to question, are you okay with a compromise or do you need him to cut off contact permanently? Maybe both of you have to decide not to go scorched earth and see if there is a middle ground. Now, for the update, I'm back with an update on my boyfriend's ex and it's not what I hoped for. It's been about a month since the awkward lunch date where we talked about his ex and honestly, I thought things would get better between us. I really hoped that having him over for Thanksgiving dinner with my family would help us reconnect and fix the issues that had come up over the past month. So, like a good girlfriend, I invited him to my parents' house for Thanksgiving dinner, hoping that the festive spirit would help us. The dinner included my parents, my younger sister, and my older brother with his pregnant wife. I love the holidays, especially Thanksgiving, because it always brings my family together. We're usually in good spirits, sharing stories, laughing around the table, and just enjoying each other's company. That's the vibe I wanted for us. During dinner, my mom asked if my boyfriend and I had any plans for the future. I could feel the atmosphere shift a little. My boyfriend awkwardly fumbled his words, avoiding a direct answer like a pro. I was hoping he would take this opportunity to reassure my family that he was in it for the long haul, but instead, he just created more questions. After dinner, my mom pulled me aside and asked if everything was okay with my boyfriend. I reassured her, insisting that everything was fine, even though I felt like a liar. Later that evening, my boyfriend stepped outside for a smoke and I decided to join him. But here's the twist. While outside, I overheard him on the phone, sounding all secretive and evasive. I tried to listen in, but you know how it is. You can never hear everything. After he hung up, I asked him who he was talking to, and he deflected, saying it was nothing important. That's when things got tense. I pressed for answers like a detective on a case, and he snapped at me, telling me to stop being paranoid. The rest of the evening was filled with a heavy silence between us, despite the festive atmosphere. It was like a cloud of awkwardness had settled over us, and we were the only ones who could feel it. I tried to enjoy the holiday with my family, but I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was seriously wrong. A few days after Thanksgiving, I got a text from my boyfriend saying he needed space to think. I was completely blindsided. During that time, I spent more time with my family, trying to distract myself from the fact that my boyfriend needed space. We were all in a celebratory mood because my brother and sister-in-law announced they were having a boy. It felt great to see my family so happy but I couldn't shake off the feeling of sadness that was creeping in. A week later, my boyfriend finally reached out, asking to meet at a local diner. He sat across from me, and I could tell he was nervous. He revealed that he had been talking to his ex more than he initially admitted. I couldn't believe my ears. The conversation grew heated, and I pointed out how his actions contradicted his words. He had the nerve to accuse me of being controlling 
and said he couldn't be with someone who didn't trust him. Like, really? After all this time, that's the excuse you're going with? A few days later, I learned from my sister that my boyfriend had been seen with his ex at a coffee shop. When I confronted him about this, he brushed it off as just a coincidence. It was like he thought I was born yesterday. Christmas rolled around, and my parents invited my boyfriend to their holiday dinner. I reluctantly agreed, wanting to keep the peace for my family's sake. I didn't want to ruin anyone else's holidays with my problem. During dinner, my boyfriend made a toast, thanking my family for their support. I wanted to roll my eyes, but I held it together. Later in the evening, my parents pulled me aside to ask if something was wrong. I explained the situation, but they seemed to side more with my boyfriend. It was like they couldn't see what was happening right in front of them. A week later, I got a message from my boyfriend saying he was spending New Year's Eve with friends, including his ex. Can you believe it? In our final conversation, he accused me of being dramatic and said he never intended to hurt me. After that, I ended things with him for good. It was painful, but I knew I had to put myself first. After our breakup, I focused on my own goals and rekindled my closeness with my family. I've been spending a lot of time with them and it feels so good to have their support. I realize that I deserve better than what he was offering me. It's been a tough journey, but I'm getting there. I hope you all had a great holiday season and are doing well. Thanks for reading my update. To answer a few questions, I had confronted him multiple times about his ex, but he always dismissed my concerns. He claimed he was only friends with her. When we met to talk, it was supposed to be about us, but he was vague and secretive about his feelings. Am I the idiot for breaking up with my girlfriend after she showed up unannounced on my lake trip with friends? I am a 26-year-old man, and I have been dating my girlfriend, who is 27 years old, for just under a year now. We started doing long distance about three months ago. She's always been pretty particular about the way she likes things done, and I'm pretty easygoing, so I usually go along with it. But lately, I've been questioning if it's become too much, and I'm trying to figure out where to draw the line. I've brought most of these things up to her before and told her that they make me a bit uncomfortable. It usually results in her crying and saying that she can't help it and that she'll never be good enough for my standards of how chill she needs to be. Typically, I end up being the one to apologize after that. But here are some examples. When we're together, she's very particular about the way she wants things done with regard to common household chores, which is understandable, and I try to do them her way. I try to be very helpful with tasks like that, but usually, whenever I do something, it's not quite right, or she just redoes it herself afterward, or talks to me like a child when explaining how to do it. I'm not someone who weaponizes incompetence when it comes to chores. I really try to help as much as possible. It just gets hard to feel competent when she always corrects me on small things like the way I fold towels or how I'm cooking something or how I dry dishes. We've always shared our locations with each other, but now that we're long distance, she checks mine much more frequently. I have to tell her whenever I go anywhere, when I get there and when I leave. The other day, on my way home from work, I stopped by a store on the way without mentioning it to her beforehand, and she started texting me asking what I was doing and why I wasn't home yet. She explained that she didn't care if I went to the store, but that she felt it was disrespectful to our relationship that I didn't tell her beforehand. If I arrive somewhere and forget to text her for a few minutes, she'll send a passive-aggressive text about me arriving. We FaceTime every day, which I enjoy, but it's gotten to the point where if I don't have a valid reason to go, I have to stay on FaceTime with her from when I get off work until I go to sleep. She says she doesn't mind when I have to go, but then tells me she's sad that I'm not prioritizing her if I go work out or just spend some time eating dinner with my roommate and chatting with him. If I hang up to go shower or something and I'm not back on the phone within 15 minutes, she'll text me something like, hello, are you still showering? It's not aggressive or anything, and I know it's really just out of curiosity, but it makes me feel guilty enough that I always feel pressure. Lately, she's been very paranoid about me cheating, 
even though I work long hours and don't do much outside of work besides talk to her. I've also never cheated on her at all, or really ever given her a reason not to trust me. She'll frequently check who I follow on social media, and if a girl has a public profile, she'll go through it and ask me why I liked certain pictures, and it usually ends with me unfollowing that girl to avoid a further argument. When I ask if she trusts me, she either tells me that she trusts me and just gets paranoid and can't help it, or she says something along the lines of, if you don't think I trust you, then why are you dating me? So I guess my question is, am I overreacting? How do I work back some of these boundaries while still being respectful to her? How do I even broach the topic? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you need to set boundaries, hard. She asks you why you liked a picture. You say because you wanted to and end the discussion. She says she's sad you won't be on FaceTime 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You remind her you have a life too. She checks your location. You remind her that you have a life and you do not owe her the details of your every movement. She asks why you're dating her if you feel like she doesn't trust you. Tell her that it wasn't like this at the start and you wanna pull the relationship back to healthy ground. Realistically, she's not going to change. Chances are incredibly good that this is simply who she is in an established relationship and she doesn't want to change. If that's the case, then a breakup will be the only option eventually. Comment two, someone constantly tracking my movements and wanting 24 hours a day, seven days a week, updates about every little thing in my life sounds so exhausting. I'm sorry, original poster, but what are you doing with someone who is basically your helicopter mom? She literally tells you how to dry dishes and doesn't like it when you make your own decisions, like stopping by a store quickly are you a 15-year-old who needs to ask permission from their mom, or are you an independent adult who can do what they want? When you do break up, because you will, because this relationship and way of living isn't sustainable, make sure to look into restraining orders. She seems like the type of person who is going to show up at your door demanding you take her back and won't leave until you do. Now, for the update. The day after our anniversary dinner, I got a text from Olivia. She wanted to FaceTime earlier than our usual time. Honestly, I hesitated. I thought we were going to talk about the dinner, and I wasn't sure I was ready for that. But I agreed. She just seemed kind of distant, and it was weird. Right away, she asked me why I hadn't called her after I left my parents' house. I was like, seriously? I thought we were past that. I told her I felt embarrassed and thought she needed space after I kind of blew up. She just accused me of not caring about her feelings, and boom, we started arguing. This long, pointless argument. I ended the call just feeling frustrated and like I was walking on eggshells. The following weekend was the 4th of July and my family always does a barbecue. I invited Olivia, thinking it might be a good chance to reconnect and clear the air. She agreed, but she kept bringing up my dad's joke about marriage. Like, seriously? It's a joke. At the barbecue, my brother Jake announced that he and Rachel were going to have a baby. Everyone cheered, and of course, my dad jokingly asked when I would propose to Olivia. I just laughed it off, but Olivia shot me this look that said I was in trouble. After dinner, she pulled me aside and demanded to know why I wasn't taking our relationship seriously. I tried to explain I wasn't ready for marriage, but she acted like I was leading her on. Then she started with the whole thing about how I never prioritized her. I just left that conversation feeling cornered and overwhelmed. Later that week, I noticed Olivia was being a lot more demanding about where I was. I was at a friend's place, and she called me like a million times wanting to know who was there. I told her it was just a game night, but she insisted on video calling to see for herself. I was so frustrated, but I agreed and introduced her to everyone. After the call, my friend pointed out how controlling she seemed. I brushed it off, but it stuck with me. That weekend, I had planned a trip to a lake with my friends, and I told Olivia about it. She flipped out, saying she didn't want me to go because she couldn't be there. I went anyway, thinking we needed some space. While I was at the lake, I got a ton of texts from her demanding to know who I was with. I didn't respond right away, which just made her more anxious. Then I checked my phone 
and saw a text saying she was coming to the lake to surprise me. I panicked. I didn't want her to just show up like that. When she arrived, she started questioning my friends about their intentions. I felt so embarrassed as she grilled them, clearly not trusting me. Afterward, I suggested we take a walk to talk privately. She refused and insisted on staying with my friends, which just upset me more. I finally snapped and told her she was ruining the trip for me. She stormed off, and I spent the rest of the evening feeling angry and frustrated. A few days later, I found out Olivia had been posting about our issues on social media, making me look like the bad guy. I confronted her, and she claimed it was just her way of coping. I was done with this. I told her we needed to talk about our future. She agreed to meet at a coffee shop. During the meeting, I laid everything out and said we needed boundaries. She cried, but this time I didn't apologize. I just walked away. The next day, I sent her a message saying I needed time to think about our relationship. She didn't respond for hours. Later that evening, I saw she had deleted all our pictures from her social media. I took that as a sign she was serious about her stance. I decided to focus on myself and my friends. By the end of the week, she sent me a text saying she wanted to talk one last time. I agreed to meet her, but this time I felt in control. She arrived and I calmly told her I was done with the constant pressure and needed a break. The conversation ended without any drama. Edit. I ended the relationship a few weeks after the final conversation. I needed time alone to think, and during that time, I realized I wanted something different. I wanted someone who would communicate calmly without constant nagging. I'm currently focusing on myself and enjoying time with friends. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.